It is uh, my pleasure to share this uh, this presentation with you to uh, hopefully to answer some questions, some calls, some fears. Um, my apologies if some of this information you know already. Yes, this is a session really was sort of geared more towards the veteran director. But yesterday at the novice session, we had tons of veteran directors. So it's going to be a mishmash of, of both. So, um, you know, it's always good to hear this information again, right? To repeat it. And uh, sometimes you'll find something new that you didn't know before, right? So I know the big question on everyone's mind is what's going to stay, what's going to change, what's going to go way after that crazy year we had last year. So, um, but once again, don't forget their handouts. This presentation will be available um, um, well, soon. I do. I know okay. that I have some time. All right, make sure you stay muted. So first of all, I wanna say, you know, you know, meet the UIL theater staff. Um, I don't know if you can see their faces here, but uh, we have Elizabeth Sykes. Elizabeth, if your camera's on, you know, go ahead and you can give them a little wave. Uh, Connie McMillan, if you're on, go ahead and give them a wave. So, um, you know, this is the team. This is the team that, uh, that runs the UIL theater office. Um, Elizabeth Sykes is our senior administrative associate. She is a calming voice on the phone, on the other end of the phone, when you are uh, frustrated at the spring meet uh, system on the online system. And, you know, you know, you followed all the rules and step-by-step -step instructions, something is still not right. So Elizabeth, well, you know, was a genius with the online system. Um, usually is able to help you through, answer some questions, as well as Connie McMillan, who is also um, our administrative assistant, and she's also the UIL Drama Loan Librarian. And I said this yesterday, but I don't know anyone who knows more about American theater than Connie McMillan. So if you have a question about scripts, you know, Connie's definitely the one to ask, and uh, uh, she can talk you through the whole uh, Drama Loan Library uh, procedure. All right. So, and we are here to answer your questions. You know, we're here to make this event fun for you because we know how 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 difficult, how challenging it can be. But uh, remember, it's still supposed to be fun. We love theater, and we're ready to help you. All right. Okay. All right. So, what I want to begin with is some deadlines, some fall deadlines, because some dates have changed. All right. I know some miscommunication out there about certain dates and when can we contact a judge for, for this level and when for this level. So I'm kind of just kind of go through it. Um, we moved up um, the date for you um, to contact uh, your first judge or for district, for zone or district, or if you know if you're doing a panel, all right, or if you're only using a single judge for your for a district, um, the first day you can contact that person is August 12th. All right. It was August 15th, is now August 12th. It's also the first day that you can draw for performance order. All right. Now I know a lot of, and I'll get into this a little bit later, but I know a lot of uh, districts, sometimes they have their planning meeting at the end of the spring. All right. Which is fine. If you're, you know, wanting to, 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 you know, find the location, you know, set the, the site, maybe set the date, um, you know, to find your contest manager, to work out some, uh, you know, some, some details, uh, but, uh, but you can't draw for your performance order and you cannot contact your judge uh, till August 12th. That's the first day you can, you can do that, all right? Um, you can now contact your by-district judge. If you are hosting um, or if you are contest managing a by-district level, then you can go ahead and contact, contact your one judge or all three judges if your by-district is using a panel, all right? But we'll get into by-district in a little bit, but uh, please uh, make sure that you communicate with your district if you're running this, your by-district reps, your district executive committee, that everyone understands what is happening, what's going on, um, how much money you're spending, all of that, and we'll get into that in a little bit. All right. So August 31st, speaking of by district, August 31st is the deadline to report the contest information for the by district contest and to give us your adjudicators um, all that information to the state office and on the by district page. All that information is on there, step by step, how to, uh, you know, how to follow the procedure, you know, uh, you know, uh, how to organize, basically how to organize the contest. So August 31st, that's another date change. All right, so August 31st. So my hope with changing the date is that as you're having your planning meeting in August, all right, for those of you who are doing it in August, is go ahead and, you know, kill two birds with one stone and start organizing that by district contest because, you know, those judges are, you know, being snatched up right now. So, uh, you know, make sure you take care of that. And uh, we'll talk more in, about, in, a, in a couple of minutes about by district. October 1st is a super important deadline, probably the most important deadline. That's your enrollment deadline, all right? That hasn't changed, all right? But it's, it's very important by October 1st, you must enroll in the one act play contest, 
All right. Now there, because of what happened last year with COVID-19 and all about enrolling, not enrolling, um, you know, last year was just a special year. All right. Um, if you didn't enroll last year because of your district, you know, chose not to enroll um, in the contest. Some folks are worried that they're going to be penalized this year. If you submitted your withdrawal letter, your withdrawal email from your administrator saying that, you know, we are withdrawing due to COVID-19 reasons and stuff, then there was not going to be a penalty. All right. If there'd be a penalty, you would know by now. All right. But please make sure that you enroll by the October 1st deadline. All right. After October 1st, if we don't see your school listed, um, you'll get a, a, you know, an email from me saying you have this much time to make sure that you are enrolled. After that, um, that hard deadline, um, you will need to contact your lead to go to your administrator and, you know, that some folks call it the walk of shame and you go to your principal and, and uh, let them know that you didn't, you missed the deadline. You'll have to go and petition to the um, district executive committee and ask to be um, allowed into your district for competition. So please don't miss that deadline. Uh, take care of that as well on your, at your, at your planning meeting in August. Um, the spring meet system will open August 1st for you to, you know, handle the enrollment. So, and there are, there's a tutorial, a video tutorial for you on our, under resources and forms, and there's also step-by-step -step instructions on how to go back and check your work even. And my, you know, my suggestion would be just screenshot it. Once you've done it, screenshot it so you have it. So in case there are any questions, right? Um, all right, so um, number uh, November 4th and 7th are other deadlines for, um, for contacting your second and third judge if you're using a panel. Uh, December 10th, all right, is the deadline to request scenic elements not permissible and to submit plays not on the approved list for consideration as contest entries for high school contests. Basically, we have moved up the deadline for you to submit a play that is not already on the approved list of plays, short list, short plays or long plays. Um, you also, the deadline to request scenic elements, which we'll get into later and all. Folks ask, you know, do I have to, what do I have to, you know, what are things that I can request? I basically say, if it's something that's not found in the handbook, like if you're asking for a 15 foot puppet or a car on stage, then you need to request that, okay, by the deadline. And there's a whole process for that um, on, the, on our website, all right? Okay, so um, if you're not familiar with our theater website, please become familiar with it because really all the information is on there. All right, I guarantee you, you will find the answer quicker on our website than you will waiting for someone to answer you on on the social media, on the Facebooks. Right, so you can find us under academics. All right, find us under academics. Um, everything, resources and forms, information if you're a contest manager. Um, the educators will find information. If you want to know who the judges are for by district, area, region, state, you'll find that information there as well. If you're interested in the film contest, if you want to know what's been added to the approved list of plays, um, the excuse me, theatrical design, junior high, what I play, all of it, you can find on, um, on our website. So um, if you haven't spent some time with us, spend some time with it. Um, Elizabeth is always updating it and trying to make it really as clear and user friendly. We know there's a lot of information and we do repeat the information throughout all the different, um, all the different links because we want to make sure that you can find it. All right. So, and of course I put here enroll by October 1st. That's very important. You'll hear me talk about that a lot. Okay. Um, what I play enrollment. Any questions, Elizabeth? Anything? Okay. Uh, what I play enrollment. And it's important that you know that your academic alignment differs from the what I play alignment. Okay. What does that mean? Um, so what does that mean? So if you go to the UL academic site, all right, you have your academic alignment. Those are all the schools that are in your district, all right? It's a bit different than what you see here in front of you, which is the one at play alignment, all right? Now, that one at play alignment that I'm showing you here, this is for 6A Region 1. This is for 2020, 2021, okay? Eventually, this is going to go away, okay? Elizabeth's going to make it disappear. And once we start getting our one act play enrollment after October 1st, you will see the, the official one act play enrollment for, for this school year, okay, for uh, for this contest season, all right? So, because you'll know that some, some schools in your district do not participate in one act play, 
All right. So, but it's there for you to, once you begin to organize your district contest, uh, you know, you want to make sure that all the schools in your district are invited to that all important planning meeting. If you go to our WAC play alignment from this past year, you can see, like, if you need to know, like, right now, what district am I in? What by district? For example, this is Region 1, District 1. Um, they're also, you know, they're in, in by District A and they're in Area 1. All right. So it's important that you start to learn um, those numbers, which number, which area, which by district you, you belong in. All right. So it looks something like this. All right. Again, after the October 1st deadline, please go to the one act play um, alignment. And you'll find that on the home page of the theater website. Paula, okay? I'll just hop in yes. real quick and um, so did ask if junior high needs to enroll. So junior high does not need to enroll. Okay, there's a few things that junior high, they're kind of lucky. They don't have to, and, and UIL does not organize the district for, for junior high. I'll just go ahead and um, talk about that quickly. Um, in junior high, uh, you, you, you know, some, some, you know, sites will say, um, Frisco, all right, have huge middle school programs. And so they even have like, I think, you know, a zone for their junior high contest, all right? Um, other places don't. Uh, you can organize your own junior high um, contest, own your own district, all right? You can put, you know, a few towns together to create a UIL, A plus or junior high one act play uh, contest. Um, I'll go ahead and go off this tangent here, but um, in junior high, you'll see that some places have junior high festivals and some places have junior high UIL one act play contests. There's a difference, all right? The UIL one act play junior high A plus contest follows all the UIL rules, okay? With the exception of you don't need to enroll, all right? Um, there's no official, you know, um, one act play entry like in a high school, okay? A festival does not necessarily follow all the UIL rules. Some places I understand follow some of the rules, some some not, but it's not an official UIL contest. There are no points attached. Only a UIL, official UIL contest, you know, has the points all attached, okay, if that makes sense, all right? So um, how your district is organized, um, you know that you have a district executive committee that basically oversees all the spring meet activities, including you know, spring athletics. So, and that per, there is a chair of that committee. All right, um, I get this question a lot. You know, um, who do I see about making sure that our people are paid for the contest? If you're running a contest, uh, if you're hosting, this is important. All right, because you'll want to know who is the contact person. So, a lot of folks call me, which is no, no problem. So feel free to call me. But also, you can go to you can basically you go to this link here, and I'll get all posts. Um, this this PowerPoint, but you can just do a search on the UIL site and just type in um, Spring Meet Chair, Academic Meet Chair, and um, and you'll find the person for your region, your conference, for your district. All right, but that's the person who uh, the the chair will basically you know that's your contact person. If let's say your district, if your school needs to withdraw from competition or late entry, um, or if you miss any of your major deadlines, you'll need to go ahead and petition to that to that district meet chair. Oops. Nope. Okay. All right. So your district one act. Um, again, you know, you know this. The purpose is for planning. It's for organizing the, the entire contest. So the handbook gives you an agenda. Um, you know, you know, basically make sure that you cover all these areas. Um, you know, it's really important that you have everybody there who's going to compete. All right. Nowadays, you know, you can you can do this, you know, this meeting, you know, of course, you know, via Zoom. So please make sure that everybody is invited, that you haven't, you know, only just a, a couple or a few of you have organized it and all that and left other folks and all that. But please make sure you send the invitation. When you send the invitation, whoever is hosting the meeting, you know, whether it's at Chili's or, you know, at a school, uh, please make sure that you, I would say, include um, perhaps the administrator on that on that email as well well when you send the invitation out. All right. Um, March 24th, another important deadline, a spring deadline, is the certification deadline for both district and by district. OK, both contests must be completed and certified by March 24th. All right. A question we get is how soon can we start the contest? When can we have zone and district? How early? So we're seeing that these contests are happening earlier and earlier. So you really want to do it like after February 10th, which is our title entry deadline. 
All right. Um, please, we ask that you be mindful of the spring calendar. Uh, please check if you're in a if you're at a, at a school that competes in everything. Um, if your students do CX and LD and you know all other academic events, computer science and so forth and all that, please check with the sponsors. Please make sure that uh, or with your academic coordinator that you're not putting the what I play contest um, on top of um, CX debate, for example. So um, you could start as early as really, you know, after February 10th. Um, we had a lot of schools to start uh, like the last week of February last year. So I know some folks are even like, you know, just beginning to work on their plays or just taking their plays to um, a festival or a clinic at that time. But, uh, but you can start your, your zone and district contest that early. All right. Um, please, as you're planning your, your contest, your district contest, your zone contest, that you take a look at the adjudicator list. Um, again, you can find that um, on our website. And by that adjudicator list, um, you can look at the TATEL website, obviously, TTAO, um, but check to see who is uh, judging area, region, and state. Because I know we'll get this a situation uh, once or twice a year where, you know, you are, you've already, you know, a, a judge has you know, forgotten they were judging an area really they've agreed to do a district and now they have that, you know, choice. They have to make a choice between, you know, district or, you know, like judge district or area. So just make sure that there are no conflicts. Please make sure that, you know, whoever you select that, you know, there are no conflict of interest. So everyone just needs to do that, that bit of work. And if you need a contest manager, um, I would encourage you to visit the Tatal site. I would encourage you to, to hire a Tatal contest manager What's the difference? Um, the difference is that the TAL contest manager has gone through training. Um, they are certified. They are up to date on all the rules and all the changes. And we all know that even though a lot of our contest managers, you know, have the best of intentions, um, they love this contest. Uh, but we know that sometimes some of them are still working off a handbook, you know, from, you know, a few years ago, okay, and things have changed. So, because inevitably I'll get a question about, you know, a rule change that happened a few years ago and, you know, maybe the contest manager is, isn't up to date. So, um, you can hire, you know, you know, your regular contest manager, but I'm going to put a plug in for a Tatal contest manager because they will be up to date on all the rules, which is what you want. Okay. Um, I mentioned this earlier, we, we draw for performance order, August 10th, November 7th is the day, um, is your first day to contact your second and third judging panel members. All right. Again, these rules do not apply to A plus OAP contests. Um, they can hire their judge two days before contest if they wanted to. Okay. Um, going back to the by district, and I'm going to stop right here. Elizabeth, are there any questions um, so far that pertain to what I've been talking about that need answering right now? Um, there was another uh, junior high question about can they participate in contests that are closer to them or are they required to participate within their district? So it really depends on on their on their district. Um, if, if their district holds a district um, A plus um, meet competition, um, then, then yes, that really is a conversation between them and their administrators. So I, I can't imagine an administrator saying, you know, you, yeah, you can compete at a different at a different competition and not within our district. So have that conversation with your with your administrator. But my guess would be like if you have a a plus district competition with all your A plus events plus one act play, you're required to to participate in that one. Okay. Um, all right, so frequently asked questions about my district. The big one is who makes the decisions for this level, all right? So in the perfect world, folks, okay, in a perfect world, that spring meet chair is going to appoint um, you know, someone from, you know, from your district and then the spring meet chair for your other by district, let's just say district one and district two, those spring meet chairs are going to appoint or you know, volunteer um, as someone to chair um, or rep, be the rep for, for that by district. All right. Um, you know, in the perfect world, that decision should have been made by May 1st. Okay. So in the perfect world. So those two reps need to register with UIL, with our office. Okay. And there's a form for that. That way we have that contact person. That way all the other directors know, you know, who to contact about a by, by district. Those two reps all right, or supposed to organize the contest. All right, they will decide, you know, if it's district one and district two, uh, if last year district one um, hosted, 
okay, was in charge of that by district this year, it falls on, on district two. However, all right, maybe there's no school in district two that can host or want to host or the facilities aren't up to par, they can find a different site or district one can host again. So again, it takes a lot of communication between those two districts. All right, to organize it. It's important if you are that by district rep that you com communicate with your the, with your the directors in your district. All right, it's good for you to go ahead and you know collect names of judges or contest managers. Um, you know when you're organizing the contest, and again on the website, it's there's a planning procedure, a guide, step by step on how to organize that contest. There's a lot of that by district um, contest organization that's happening right now. So there is some confusion because I know last year was a wonky year it was kind of strange um you know some you know some districts were like well we hosted last year but we were supposed to host the year before and all that so really folks that's just you know you the two reps coming together the two districts coming together and and talking it out just communicating and again doing what's best for the kids what's best for the contest find the best space and uh, your best contest manager and your best you know judge or group of judges uh, for that contest all right all right, and so it should look something like this. I forget which 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 uh, covers this is, but you know these these two these well I say these four like thirteen and fourteen will meet fifteen and sixteen. You'll see the rep reps um, are posted already on the website. So as you go to the website under by district, you're going to see there are all kinds of holes. All right, so you may want to go ahead and ask around, ask the other directors in your district. You may be the rep, you don't even know it, or maybe you you've entered a district where you're you're new to that district, but you didn't realize that you're also going to be the by district rep so please make sure you get that information if you don't know please go to your administrator and they should be able to tell you they should be able to you know find out from the spring meet chair someone will get appointed somebody will be you know voluntold to 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 um, head that that by district all right Again, that information is due to our office by August 31st, all right? So I say do this ASAP do start planning it while you're doing your district planning so take care of that. All right. Our wonderful online spring meet entry system. All right. So this system, for those of you who are familiar with it, all right. Um, and I know there's some confusion, and it's just, you know, that's just the UIL rate. Right? All right. And I say this all with love, all the love and joy in my heart. So enroll in what I play. You'll do that through the online spring meet system. It will open August 1st. Is that correct, Elizabeth? I believe it's opening August 1st. Okay. Sorry, I forgot to unmute you. Yes, that is correct. And I'll just add in a little caveat. There's definitely some by district information that has come in this week that I am in charge of posting and have not had time to do yet. So if you are one of those folks who submitted a form, it will be posted soon, but it just hasn't been posted just yet. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, I know, so, you know, folks know, yeah, hey, this week is, you know, Capital Conference Week. Next week, we'll, we'll update all our, um, our website with our judges, our by districts and all that. Um, you will use the online entry system, the Spring Meet Entry System, to enter your play title, all right? That date has changed. So that is February 10th. I keep saying February 10th because you can start having your zone district contest after that date. All right. Uh, we want to make sure that the play you're doing is legit, um, that it is either you know on the approved list of plays or that you have submitted and had it approved. All right. So. You know, last year was better, um, but you know, like the year before, I know we had uh, two or three schools that assumed because it was a say a French play or a Concord play that you know any play by that publisher um, was approved. And they're wrong. It wasn't approved. And I mean, they didn't submit it through the play approval process. Um, you know, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't, you know, submit it. It's on our list. And, uh, you know, I had to make the call saying, you know, you can't do that play. Um, you missed the deadline. So please, of course, always make sure, check, double check that, um, that the, you know, you look at the updated list, it is updated. Um, Elizabeth's even included a, uh, you know, a link on our homepage that you can see the, the, the plays that have been added this year to the approved list of plays. So that's also due February 10th. And also your official con con contestant entry um, is also found on the Spring Meet um, entry system. All right. That is part one of your contestant entry, okay? This is where it gets confusing sometimes. Um, you enter your performers, you enter your crew, you can enter three directors on that online system, all right? And there is a deadline, all right? The deadline is 10 days before your contest 
or the deadline set by your contest manager, all right? It's really important that you stay in communication with your contest manager. They will let you know when this information is due, all right? You know, double check with them. Usually it's 10 days before your contest, but some set the date maybe 15 days before or 12 days before, all right? So just double check because they also have deadlines. They've got to take care of the program and make sure that, you know, you know, you have a complete unit set and everything is, uh, you know, everything is ready for your contest, all right? That's part one of your contested entry, all right? That's the online system. And there are just step-by-step -step instructions for that, how to check your work, all of that, all right? Um, this pesky contested entry form, also known as the mock form, all right? Um, there is a link at every level. You, you, know, you click that link, contested entry form, and you can enter your fourth director. You'll enter your contestants, and uh, you'll also include your music credits. Um, on that form, and really the co the contest manager uses that form, um, usually, okay, uses that form uh, to create the program, the playbill, all right? So th that deadline is, you know, 10 days before your contest or the deadline set by your contest manager, all right? And it's important to know no play may be presented in contest and when you've completed your online enrollment, your play title registration, and your official contestant entry form uh, through the online system. Okay, those three things, okay? All right, any questions about the online system, the entry system, Elizabeth? Uh, no, there's a question about clinics, so I don't know if you want that now or- We'll get to clinics, we'll go ahead and get to clinics, we will get to that, I promise. All right, so um, suggestions on, on finding scripts. If you're a veteran director, you you already know all this information. Um, you know, you can always go to the theater website and go to resources and forms, where you'll find the participation list from 2014. And I'm not sure that 2021 has been updated yet, but it will be. So, but you can take a look at, you know, all the plays that were, that were performed uh, from 2014 to you know, last year and uh, which schools uh, performed it. So, um, and you'll see that, you know, you know, a lot of those plays are on our proof list. In fact, I believe every, I think every state champion play this past year was a play that was already on the approved list. All right. Uh, please, you know, visit our approved list of short plays and long plays. If you are a new director, new, not comfortable with, with editing, cutting scripts and all that, take a look at our list of short plays. All right. Um, you know, Check out the UIL Drop Alone Library, uh, where we have over thirty-eight thousand scripts. Um, I would say we have all of you know all of the lists, all of the plays that are on the approved list of uh, long and short plays can be found there, and it's very very inexpensive. Uh, visit the publisher websites, and please do not please do not request cuttings on social media, please. All right, um, may I submit uh, plays from foreign countries? Yes, however. All right, we ran into this situation last year a few few times. Uh, we're ordering scripts from, from England, from London, and they haven't come in yet, and because of the pandemic, and because of this, and, and all that. And a lot of schools were kind of like out of luck. They had to get you know permission from the publishers saying that they could make photocopies because their set of plays for their company hadn't arrived yet. So just know that you're, if you're working with, you know, working overseas, that you may have overseas problems, right? Um, may I submit an original play, an unpublished play, my own, a student's play, uh, from another playwright, a, a Texas teacher. We have wonderful uh, writers um, who are also what I play directors. So yes, the answer is yes. There's no longer an approved list of publishers. All right. So you can submit a play. Just remember, we just want, you know, uh, you want wonderful literature for your students. You want, you know, wonderful language for them to work with. And, uh, and you know, we have a lot of you know, directors who are writing plays for their students. All right. Um, but please seek publisher permission. Please, you know, handle your royalties. Handle all that before starting production. If you attended the Concord uh, Licensing Concord, uh, publishers did a, uh, a session yesterday on licensing and royalties and payment and all that. Um, they will, Concord will stress to you that please start the process early because you never know. Okay, there could be changes, there could be delays, there could be playwrights who will or will not accept, you know, changes to the scripts. So please make sure you do that early. Please do not wait till the contest week to take care of that. Uh, please follow up with your bookkeeper, uh, whoever's handling, you know, the payments, the royalties. So follow up with them because I know there's some instances where, you know, hey, I left it up to my, you know, accountant or bookkeeper and it never happened. And then you're stuck because you don't have proof you haven't, you know, you haven't followed through with all the, the, the legal process of, of producing a play. So, and also please make sure that you read your license uh, from, the, uh, ooh, from the publisher or playwright. 
platform from, okay? Job Alone Library, all right? Um, we are still open for business, even though we're not in the office yet, uh, but you could still uh, submit the request and we'll fill that request and get you the scripts as soon as possible, all right? All that information under resources and forms to just look for Job Alone Library, all right? Um, please do not submit a play to UIL if it's already on the approved list of long or short plays. Um, you still need to submit the script to your contest manager, the integrity script and to your and for your judges, your judge or your judges. So your contest manager will will handle all that um, for you. They'll communicate with you on the process of doing that. Um, you still, if a play is on the approved list, and I, this is where I sometimes we get the the you know uh, the feedback. Um, if a play is on the long or short list of approved plays, yes, you still need to edit for time and for content. All right, there are still UIL rules um, regarding um, profanity, obscenities. Um, and so in community standards. So please make sure that you follow that. And, you know, not all those plays, um, you know, are perfectly 39 and a half minutes. You still have to edit. All right. So, uh, but, you know, my best suggestion is before you start handling, dealing with like, you know, subjects of language or content and all that, please make sure that you have these conversations with your administrator. Um, you know, what are the community standards? You know, what, what do you all feel comfortable uh, performing on stage? So before you start looking for, um, your script for contest. Um, if you're doing a, a short play in its entirety, all right, you're doing the entire thing. Uh, we always get the question, do I have to highlight the entire play? So the answer is no, you don't. But just leave us a note. Just put a, a note, a short letter, letter or something saying uh, we're doing the entire play so that we know that you know you, you basically have done the work. Okay, uh, so no need to highlight it if you're doing the entire play. Uh, you'll be surprised. Sometimes we'll get like a three act play with no note and no highlights, and we have to return it because we're confident you're not planning on doing a three hour play for competition. Please no photocopies um, unless you have written permission from the publisher or from the playwright. Okay, that includes sending scripts to judges. All right, um, it's just copy copyright laws. Uh, please remove whatever you're not going to use in the play. Remove it in ink. This can be black ink, blue ink, whatever, um, and highlighting yellow. Please, please do not cut in pencil. Even though we were all probably told and raised to, to cut in pencil uh, for the purpose of the, the play approval process, please do not cut um, in pencil, please. All right. And you can start submitting after August 1st. The form will be live. Uh, we have till December 10th, an earlier deadline. And then for junior highs, you have basically 45 days before your competition. But you know, it starts August 1st through April 15th for junior high, August 1st, December 10th for high schools. All right. And again, please, the myth of, you know, do not assume that a play just because it was approved in the past will be approved again. All right. Because things change. All right. Things change. Uh, and not just make, because it was approved one time, they automatically gets you know put on the on the list. All right. Um, some uh, questions about company size that we get. Uh, may I list students as both crew and performer? No, you can list them as one or the other. Uh, may a crew member participate in the scene transition? For example, can we dress them as waiters, servers, and have them do this beautifully choreographed um, set transition? Um, the answer is no, because they would be considered a performer. If you're doing it in blackout or blue out and you're there, it's obvious that your crew members are, you know, like dressed in blacks or whatever, and uh, they're just making the set change, that's not, a, that's, there's no issue there. It's when you basically have made them a performer um, in costume, making those transitions, all right? May a performer also serve as stage manager or can they run lights backstage or, you know, do a handle a, um, um, a side light or sound effects and all of that? Um, by all means, yes, but you still have to li either list them as a stage manager or a, stage manager, a crew member or a performer. Okay. Um, do they need to be backstage after the setup? My crew members, can they, can they be in the house? And the answer is no. All right. If you have crew members, they need a crew assignment. It's up to you to create that crew assignment, but audience member is not one of them. So they need to either be backstage or be in the light sound area uh, with their crew assignment. All right. They can't just be members of the audience. Um, is there a minimum number of performers in one act play? Um, the minimum is three. So no two person scenes no monologue plays um, in what I play. Okay, you have to at least have three people. Okay. Any questions, Elizabeth? Because I'm about to get into some of these changes and updates and stuff, stuff like that. Um, yes, there have been a few questions coming in 
about uh, play stuff. So maybe we can answer them now. Uh, let's see. One person is, at least one person has asked because they're not clear on where on our website to find the um, uh, PDF that has the added plays for this year. So currently it's just posted in that one place on the theater homepage. But mm -hmm. um, if you look to the right side in the yellow boxes, scroll okay. down, look at the right boxes. There's a little box that says plays added this year. Nothing was removed this year. Um, and of course, if you look at the playlist, those new plays will already be posted in the correct place. Um, let's see, someone else has asked, uh, um, when can we start submitting scripts for approval since you are not in the office yet? That is correct. We are not in the office yet, but you can start submitting plays August 1st. And then one more question that you will answer instead of me, that is, can we cut the judges' copies in pencil? Um, I suppose, yeah. I mean, we're just asking for an ink um, for us for, for approval purposes. So, and there are a few more questions, but I'll wait till. Okay. Okay. So, um, pandemic updates, studies, and changes. So, okay. So, our plan is to have a traditional, as traditional a season as possible. Uh, in other words, we're not doing the modification, modified schedules that we did last year. So, there will be no schedule B or C. Uh, we are not going to do the um, rehearsal that leads straight into um, the performance. All right. Uh, we'll still do performances, you know, as it is in the handbook, you know, running them back to back. Okay. Um, how you normally do it. Um, schools remain on campus for critiques and results. Um, you, know, you know, can they go back to their ho hotel room and change clothes and come back for the award ceremony? Of course, things like that. So um, basically the way things were uh, pre-COVID, all right? Uh, director meetings should be held in person, but those are things that can, you know, still be held via Zoom, but um, no Zoom critiques, nothing like that, everything live and in person. So please plan for all levels of competition, zone, district by district, area, region, state, um, three advancing from zone, district by district and area, two, of course, advancing uh, from, from region, all right? Um, the 60 second time limit is back in force. Uh, so no more than 60 seconds shall elapse between the setup time and the beginning of the performance, all right? And you guys know, what the reason for, for that, that that rule is. We want to basically start these contests on time, all right? So 60-second time limit, you are not going to be DQ'd um, because this contest manager or this, you know, the director took took them more than 60 seconds to, to you know, leave the stage. So it's not about that. It's about starting the contest um, promptly, all right? Um, the headsets, uh, you know, so you use the headsets that are uh, available at the, at, the, at the contest site. So you may not bring your, your headsets unless you have approval from like, the contest manager and that they're being used, they're allowed to be used by, by everyone. But no, you should be using the, um, the headsets that are provided um, at the host site. Last year was basically, it was a COVID year, okay? Um, changes, all right? So this will be official in October, but we're announcing it as being prohibited now. Um, the use of contact strikes, slaps, punches to the face and head, basically a shoulders above, okay? In competition is prohibited, all right? So um, you will see this on your revised community standards form, uh, the copyright compliance from all of that. Um, when your administrator signs off, they will have to check, make sure that there are no contact hits, strikes to the head, to the face, from the shoulders up, all right? And the official wording will happen in October, and hopefully it should be approved by our legislative council and it'll be an official um, rule for, for UIL. So um, the question comes up that, so that means that we can hire uh, stage combat um, choreographers, fight, you know, combat choreographers, fight directors uh, for what I play, and the answer is no. You can have a stage combat workshop, you can have, you know, hire fight choreographers, to teach you and your students and your other directors, your entire district, uh, you know, you know, fight choreography and why not? Okay, or stage combat and uh, techniques, um, why not? All right, but you cannot hire someone specifically for your contest play. All right, uh, to work on something like dialects or fight choreography or acting moments. All right, you can't hire someone like that unless you have uh, other schools are involved and it goes back to aid in directing. 
All right. Your integrity script, you do no longer need to include your music cues in your integrity script. We still request that you have, we still have require that you have your integrity script uh, when you come to contest, um, but you don't need to include your, your music, your music cues in it. You still have your music log sheet that is required at competition, but you don't need to worry about putting all those cues when it starts and stops um, um, in that integrity script. Okay. Um, the UIL study on critiques. Uh, so this is something that um, was a, a proposal um, this year for, came from the UIL Theater Advisory, and we are studying it for this year. So uh, we're going to study the require the proposal to remove the requirement that critiques follow the awards announcement in the one act play competition. Uh, this seemed to be very, very popular with adjudicators and with directors. Um, you know, I heard back from lots of folks who really enjoyed um, having the critique following immediately following their performance. There was some that said, you know, you know, we weren't so fond of that because because it felt weird, you know, you're on this high from performing and all of a sudden you're receiving, you know, critical feedback and some just really, really loved it. So we said, why not study it this year? So for your zone, district and by district levels, okay, your contest manager working with the district, okay, working with the director, directors, you know, make sure that everyone is in agreement, okay? Um, you'll need to basically uh, fill out a request form, all right? Uh, requested that critiques occur before announcing results. I mean, it's a form that has, it's coming soon. Um, it's gonna be approved from us. It's, there's no issue there, all right? Because we wanna follow up and study, all right? So you can have your critique immediately following your performance, or you could wait till right before the awards announcement and have your critiques done after all the schools have performed and then handle your critiques there. So those are your two, your, your two options, or you can just have it the way it was pre-COVID and you can just have your critiques post, you know, the announcement of the results. After the awards ceremony, you can hold your critiques then, all right? Um, if you do hold it before the announcement of the results, please make sure contest managers or let your contest manager know to inform the adjudicators this is how you're going to handle it. So there are no surprises uh, for the judges there, all right? Because you're going to have to obviously, you know, work the scheduling and everything uh, for them as well, all right? For area and region, these critiques will occur after all performances and before announcing results. So we're not going to do the critiques after the award ceremony. So we're going to wait till all the schools have performed. All right. And then we'll do the critiques and then we'll do the awards and, and results, obviously. At state, the critiques will happen the way they've always happened. So um, if you're on a Thursday, Friday um, at state, then you'll have your critique the following day, the following morning. If you are a Saturday uh, state participant, then they'll happen after the award ceremony that evening on Saturday night. Okay. So any questions about the UIL study on critiques? Remember that that form is not available yet, um, but it will be, so coming soon. And I'll make an announcement and send an email for all of that. All right, do you have any questions about that, Elizabeth? Um, I think there is a question from Amy okay. Arlett, but I don't actually have her question. I just have her little addendum regarding critiques. Okay after performances. So I don't know if she's, okay, can we run the show, go to critique immediately following the performance, then the judges return to auditorium to watch the next show? Um, yeah, I mean, that's basically happening. Just you're having it, holding your critique before the, before, before the announcement of results, before the award ceremony, however you wanna do it, whether you wanna do it right after the performance or after all the schools have performed, all right? So either way. Okay, or the traditional way, which is holding it after the award ceremony. Okay, and that form that I'll have will basically you, you'll get to check, check, you'll mark it off. So that that form is probably going to be submitted by the contest manager. Okay, or it could be submitted by the DEC. You know, your DEC chair could submit it and all. So um, it's not up to every uh, director. It's for the entire contest. Okay, you don't get to choose. Well, I want my critique to happen after the award ceremony, and somebody else gets to say, "Oh, I want my critique to happen uh, right after my performance." So it's going to be a combined effort. So. All right. Our next study is on clinics and festivals. All right. So we're going to basically extend the modification that we had last year for, for clinics and festivals. So um, if you, you know, want to invite a person to come watch your show, 
Okay. Um, you can do that. You will need to fill out a form. A school will need to fill out a form if you're going to hold that type of clinic. Everything else remains the same, but you can maybe bring a critic to your home campus. Please, you cannot have, you know, that session with a critic can't be more than two hours. That means a performance and a critique. Okay. These are not all day workshops um, on your, on your one act play. All right. All participating schools must submit a physical clinic form that's coming soon as well um, to the state office. Um, it includes the name of your school, the clinician's name, and so forth. All right. And again, why we need that form is because this is an official study. And so we'll look at it at the end of the year and see how many folks participated this way, or did you, you know, prefer is the preference the traditional clinic or festival where you either hosted three schools or you traveled to a place and uh, and went attended your your traditional clinic festival, okay? Any questions about that? Basically, it's the same modification as last year, so. Okay. Uh, yes, there are a couple of questions. So um, the earlier question that came in about clinics was if a school wants to go to a clinic or host a clinic, does that mean that all the other schools have to accommodate that school, even if it means that some schools will have to compete during their spring break? I'm not sure, repeat that question again, I'm not sure. Um, so the question is, it sounds like if a school, if one individual school wants to go to a clinic or host a clinic, does that mean all of the other schools, I guess that would be in that same district, have to accommodate that individual school, even if it means that some of those schools will then have to compete, I, I think that means at the clinic during their spring break. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, are they talking about like, do they have to invite all the other schools to that clinic? Um, the answer is no, they don't have to invite all the schools to the clinic. If they're talking about competition, um, they can't compete on a separate, I'm not sure if I understand, they can't like participate on a separate day from everybody else. So, I mean, you can have your own clinic, um, you know, bring your own person in for two hours, that's fine. There's no minimum requirement, no minimum, minimum number of schools that have to attend. If your district's gonna have a clinic, do you have to attend it? I know you don't have to attend it if you don't want to. So that's what I'm getting from that question. Great, and then- um, Email me if I'm wrong. There was a question that also came in um, that maybe you answered, but I, I can't recall. Can we clarify the difference between festival and clinic? I'll try. You know, uh, back in the day, you know, a clinic and a festival were the same thing. Uh, we were going to festival and at a festival you perform your play and you receive critiques. Okay. Usually what a festival means now is that um, usually it applies to, let's say, a junior high festival, where basically it's a, you know, a, a series of, of plays being performed. Um, there could be an adjudicator, but is that officially UIL? There are no points. And, you know, sometimes there are awards given, sometimes not. Really what a clinic is, you go to a site or the person comes to you, you perform your play, you receive critique, and that's it. There are no awards given, there are no points. So we use the term interchangeably. Maybe the time is, you know, it's coming that we need to go ahead and separate those two words. But, you know, normally a festival is like, you know, it's a, a day of, of play performances, and, uh, but, it's not, but it's not UIL, okay? So there's no points and there's no UIL awards given, okay? So maybe it's time to change the wording or to really separate that. I get it, I hear you, okay? Anything else, Elizabeth? Um, there are quite a few questions that have come in about stage combat. So I don't know if you want those. Now. I'll say those at the end. Let me go ahead and go through. So um, our state judges have been selected for this year. Um, so we have a wonderful slate. We have like seven judges, I believe, who are brand new uh, to the state meet. So we're very, very excited. Please, it's important that, um, that you do your evaluations after your contest. Um, that's how these, these judges are selected, all right? So it's not just me, one, you know, and the almighty Oz who goes around appointing people. These all come from, you know, these are lists that are, you know, um, that come basically based on your evaluation. So all, you know, the positive you know, feedback, we didn't hear the positive feedback. We also need to know, um, you know, the critical moments as well so that we can, you know, have the conversation with, with a, a, a judge if we need to. So please, 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 you know, fill out, um, please fill out those evaluations at the end. All right. 
Um, and all the list judges listed for area, region, and state can be found um, on our site. All right, um, let me just do the pitch real quick and we'll answer those questions. We'll have 10 minutes left. Um, our next session following this one is the, called the most often given notes during my years adjudicating the UIL One Act Play Contest. Practical information to prepare you for the One Act Play season um, is brought to you by uh, Yvonne Phillips Dupree, who many of you know her as a Tatao adjudicator. Uh, she's also a retired educator and she is our soon to be uh, Tatao chair elect. So join us at 11 o'clock. Uh, we also have um, a sessions to today and tomorrow. Uh, oh yeah, today for, for sure. Uh, two sessions on the Young Filmmakers uh, Festival. So uh, with Chris Rector, and Elizabeth Sykes on um, basically st strategies to start building your film program, um, whether you're 1A or you're 6A. And tomorrow we have uh, a session with um, the directors from PSJ Southwest who, um, who do theater, uh, do what I play, do theatrical design and the film contest. Uh, have been very successful at that. They're doing a session, a joint session, and then followed by sessions with Rachel Gomez on the theatrical design contest. All right, so please, you know, go back to the your calendar and do that. Um, theater resources, again, I'll post that. Please, you know, check our theater resources site. There's lots of good stuff there from how to run a tech rehearsal to copyright laws, all of that, okay? So Elizabeth, go ahead, let's hit you with the questions. Go for it. Okay, um, before I get to all the stage combat ones, I'm just gonna go through ones that have come in. So a question that came in earlier and I, I'm guessing that this is referring to the by district reps. So the question is, is the host school automatically the rep? Um, not necessarily. Um, usually, yes, but not necessarily. It could be you're the host school, but you're, you don't have the facilities to host. All right. Then you need to have that conversation, either find another school um, in your district that can host, or if it needs to go back to last year's school last year last year's host then it can be all right but it's not you know it's not mandatory that you host if you don't have the facilities for home state okay and um another question that came in earlier was can you confirm whether or not alternates are allowed in dressing rooms yes they are allowed in dressing rooms okay and then someone didn't quite catch what you said about performers helping with crew duties did she say we list them as performers Yes. So if they're performing on stage, even if it's one line, they're a performer. OK, you list them as a performer, as an actor. All right. But can that person also pull the curtain at the end of the show? Yes, they can do that. Or they can, you know, help with the sound effect backstage. But you don't need to list them. You won't be listing them as crew, either performer or crew. OK. And a question about a small district. So someone who it sounds like they're maybe the only high school in their district that is participating at the district level, how do we find out where and when we compete? That's the question. Um, so that will have to come from your district executive committee. So best thing to do is to contact, you know, talk to your principal about that and ask them. So what have they decided? So if there are no other schools, like for example, last year, because of COVID, we had districts where maybe one school was participating. So that school automatically moved to the by district level. All right, there was no competition. There were no points given. There were no awards or anything. That school automatically went to by district. So if that's your situation, that could be the case this year. All right, but I will speak to your administrator. Okay, so now we'll get into some of the stage uh, combat ones. So when you were talking about stage combat, some of these questions came in. Uh, okay. The sort of new rule change about stage combat, does this rule also include stage slaps slash stage punches and then in parentheses, since there is no contact. It's all, the rule is about contact, okay? So you can do, you know, a fake slap, a fake punch, a fake kick, um, no contact, you know, to the face, the neck, okay? Up, shoulders and up, okay? No contact is the rule. Okay, what about a hair pull? Would that be allowed? Um, no, I mean, it would have to, there's, you could do hair pull safely. You could do it, there's stage, there's ways to do it safely. So in other words, we don't want to injure, take any chance of injuring the child, the student. And then a question, can stabbing take place on stage in a fight or would that be considered a contact strike? If you're, if you're really, I mean, if you are, 
the rules about the up, up, up above, okay? The head, the neck, the ears, all that, okay? I mean, you can still have stage combat. You can still do, you know, fight scenes with, with swords or sticks and things like that. The whole issue is about contact, okay? You should not be, um, you know, obviously, you know, stabbing somebody, but I know there are, you know, trick knives, trick daggers, things like that. Um, that should not injure um, a student. So those are actually very good questions. I think I will go and research those as far as, you know, you know, what is the proper procedure? Because I'm not a stage combat expert. I just want to make sure that our students aren't getting hurt. Okay. Getting punched in face, punched in the face and slapped and all that. So that's a good question. I'll come back to that. Okay. okay next step. And I'm sorry, the messages are coming in. So I'm not sure if I'm Time for all of them, but uh, who do we contact to get last year's critique if we are a new director coming in to see what our school did right or wrong in the previous contest year? How to get last year's critique? Um, I mean, you should have received your written evaluation at the contest. So if you didn't receive it, um, that you need to contact your contest manager and see if they have it. Because they probably, if for somehow it didn't make it into your hands, your contest manager may have it in a folder somewhere. But we don't keep a file of it. OK, question about the critiques format. Does uh, whatever they decide, does it have to be agreed upon by all the schools at the contest? Yes, yes. And then yes. someone who missed um, what you said about fight choreographer in terms of hiring them. I guess you can't of. hire a fight choreographer to stage to choreograph the fight scenes in your one act play. All right. Just like you couldn't hire, you know, a local actor to work on a few scenes in your one act play to get the truth and the meaning behind that particular scene. Okay. That's considered aid in directing. Now, could you hire someone to do an acting workshop for all your students or for everyone in your district or for everyone your, on your campus or a stage, you know, a stage combat workshop for everyone on campus or all your students? Of course, yes. It's about when they're working specifically on your UIL contest entry play. That's the issue. So you couldn't hire someone to choreograph your stage combat for your one act play. Okay. And um, uh a question that came in that was clarifying the earlier question about the sort of singular school wanting to do a clinic and if the other schools in the district kind of had to um, deal with that situation. The clarification was that last year they had to have contests during spring break because a different school in that district wanted to go to a clinic. Ah, that's an issue. That's when that district executive committee comes in. Actually, that's a situation where you, you know, all the schools in the district need to come to an agreement. And, um, and that's what your DEC is for. So if there are issues with that, you contact your administrator. And if it requires, you know, DEC involvement, then so be it. So. Um, okay. And then there's a question, when will rule changes to the handbook be published? Good question. Um, so all the handbook is we're it's still in process. So I'm hoping within the next week or two, um, our handbooks hopefully is going to look a little bit different. Um, the theater advisory committee um, worked on it. We're been, we've been working on it, so it's a lot easier to read because we figured that the one of the main issues, the problems with the handbook, is that you have some information for directors, and then it's later on with contest managers, and then with adjudicators, and it's all kind of like we're not sure where to look. So we're trying to streamline it so that everything you know follows basically the constitution all the rules regarding directing, all the rules regarding clinics are all found in the same place. So um, it's coming soon within the next, within the two weeks, okay? Because it still has to be, you know, reviewed and make sure it's, you know, spell checked and all that. So within the next couple of weeks, but I'll announce it. Okay, we're right at 1057. I don't know if you want a few more questions. Sure, we can take uh, it. Okay, so what is the process used to have a clinic at my home campus? Um, the process really for a clinic, you don't have to, I mean, all, if you're going to have a, a, um, a clinic with one person, um, then you're going to fill out a form saying we brought in um, Elizabeth Sykes to be our, our clinician. Um, that's it. You're going to submit, submit that to us. You don't have to request permission from UIL to host a clinic or a play festival, okay? Um, you just have to have the rules in aid and directing. You have to have you know, at least three schools. And that person who's coming to watch the play, they can watch the play. And they, you know, they got two hours with your school. So to see the play and to give you a critique. So, okay, look at aid and directing um, in the handbook, in the current handbook, or send me an email or call me. Question, Next. what's the maximum number of actors in the play? 
Um, the maximum number of actors. So you have your company of 20, your company of 20, all right? That's your competitive team, all right? 20, all right? You could have 15 actors and five crew members, or you could have, you know, five actors and 15 crew members, all right? That's performers and crew. Alternates are separate, okay? You can have no more than four alternates. But who is competing? Okay, you've got 20 to use however you want. You could have 19 actors and one crew member if you wanted to, but not one actor and 19 crew members. So you have at least three actors. Can parents okay. help apply makeup? Sorry? Can parents help apply makeup? Not during the contest, no. Okay. They can't be in the dressing room unless they're a full-time employee of the a school district, unless they're listed as a director. One person is asking to for you to toggle back one slide in your slideshow because they missed something in there that they want to see. Um, address. Okay, so someone again asking about stage slaps. Will there be issues if the stage slaps look too realistic? I ask because a few years ago we did such a great stage slap that everyone thought it was real. Um, I mean. We're not going to have a referee on stage with you looking at the stage slaps. So, I mean, if it's if it looks real, that's great. But if there's contact and it's if it's if it's a witness contact, then I mean, that's that's going to be a violation. So okay. a couple do it safely. I think two more quick ones and then we're at 1059. So we yeah, got to go. go. But um, uh, at the junior high level, can you get input from your high school director on your one act play or can they only teach techniques separate from the plays scenes? You can have your high school, um, your high school director watch your junior high um, when I play entry because they're full time members, uh, full time employees of the school district. So yeah, it's totally allowable. Okay, and we're gonna have to call it end. All right, send me your questions though uh, with email. Uh, we've got Yvonne Phillips Dupree happening next, so we need to get off on this call and on to the next one. All right, folks, have a great year. Um, you know, again, if you have questions, email me. All right. I'll get, I'll get back to that. Okay. Maybe I'll add them to, um, the slide. All right. You'll have a, a great rest of the summer and a great school year. All right.